Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Polani. I guess the place to go this morning is going to be um, the opening yesterday of a, a three-day uh, retreat um, by, you know, ministers, permanent um, secretaries and head of government um, agencies um, where, frankly, you could say the riot act was read, but I, I don't know that that was the way in which it was meant. Uh, but many people will recall what a lot of papers have sort of highlighted from in there. You're going to sign a bond of understanding, speaking to all the you know big men and uh, officials assembled there. If you're performing, nothing to fear. If you miss the objective, we'll review. If there is no performance, you take your leave. Um, well, and then there's the establishment now we've learned of a result delivery unit uh, that will be monitoring everything going on. Um, a lot of people will feel that, well, this is a very refreshing breeze, shall we say, where people are going to actually be assessed uh, as we go along. All those, um, all those people, public officials who work for the country um, are going to be assessed and uh, corrections can be speedily made without any uh, long stories, as we say uh, locally. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about today. And um, actually, this program is a sense in which um, we, we want to hear what, what you, the viewers out there, think about this. So we're going to leave much more of the time, uh, if not most of the time, to reactions uh, from among our viewers there. It's out there. Uh, it, was, it couldn't have been clearer. And um, so... People would have been thinking about that, and um, this morning our program is going to be essentially uh, a reaction, responses, commentaries uh, to that, both at home and abroad. So let's kick off then with um, this report to sort of refresh our memories by R. Femi Akonde in Abuja on yesterday's opening. President Tinubu has empowered his special advisor on policy to supervise a result and delivery unit that will keep ministers on their toes and monitor their key performance index. President Tinubu also insists his administration will not make excuses for the failures of past administrations and emphasized that the priority of the government will be improving education, healthcare and eradicating poverty. At the end of this retreat, they are going to sign a bond of understanding between you, the ministers, the permanent secretary, and myself. If you are performing, nothing to fear. If you miss the objective, we review. If no performance, you leave us. The secretary to the government of the federation, who supervises the federal cabinet on behalf of President Tinubu, says members of the president's cabinet must be accountable and work for the actualization of the Renewed Hope agenda. The bonds contain the ministerial deliverables alongside their key performance indicators, KPIs. Each of the KPIs contain the baseline data and targets for the next four years. There were goodwill messages from the British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Richard Montgomery, and the World Bank country director, Shubham Chowdhury. The British envoy says he admires President Tinubu's leadership, especially his international engagements, and promised his country's support for Nigeria. Nigeria faces big security, economic and social challenges in a global context of big challenges a difficult global economy, shifting geopolitical and foreign policy pressures. So we're here to support your programs. We take your guidance from you. But even though we have the word bank in our names, I hope you will think of us as more than a bank. I mean, our real hope is that you will trust us and that we will be able to earn your trust, that we have something more to offer in the nature of solutions. President Tinubu says the purpose of the retreat is to get the ministers to sign a bond of understanding that will be a commitment to service delivery without any form of mediocrity. Femi Akonde, TVC News, Abuja. Okay, so there you have it. And uh, as I was saying, a, a lot of Nigerians will think of this as um, 
um, a departure, a clear departure from the way governance has been conducted. Uh, it might well be that these kind of structures might have been in the works even before this administration, who's to tell? Uh, but then it is being brought out, you know, as it were, uh, center uh, forward for people to know. Um, so oftentimes we've heard people comment, you know, in the past about um, the lack of performance as far as they can see. Oftentimes we hear, what is that one doing? What, is, what are they doing in that department, in that ministry? Well, now, even they themselves, that is the administration itself, has set up this unit. And it's not, the ministers, of course, um, yeah, I guess they're very, the, among the highest ranking uh, of uh, public officials. So we have this caption of uh, ministers to perform or take their leads. But it's not just limited to the ministers. It's also uh, permanent secretary, uh, heads of government uh, agencies as well. Um, well, the number should have been there. Um, so as I said, this program is going to be devoted really to getting reactions from out there. So even though the number hasn't been put on there, if you do know the number, you can begin to uh, call in so that we you know, can talk about this. Um, arguably, this is revolutionary in terms of um, the way you know, we've gone about our business in the past. Good morning, Mr. George. Good morning, Uncle Yuri. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you very much, Uncle Yuri, for bringing up this uh, topic. I'm particularly very happy that the president is listening to uh, some suggestions that some of us have been making and that he's taking it very serious. I'm happy for one the person he, he, he puts to be the assessor, that is Hadiza Bala Usman, is somebody that you cannot compromise. She's like her father. You know her father. And I've read the book she published about the issues she had with the Minister of Transport when she was MPAMD. Anybody that reads that book, we know the type of person that lady is. But the president needs to consolidate that department. The work there, with what the president has spelled out, the work there is enormous, and she needs extra hands. The leader there needs extra hands to be able to carry it out, because to assess these ministers and their ministries is not going to be an easy task. That is one. Secondly, I want to uh, suggest to Mr. President that if you want the civil service to be uh, productive, you should try to digitalize the service. That's what Lagos State government did some, you know, some years back. And you can see that the civil service in Lagos State is like the private sector. You go in there and see how they function. Most of the uh, revenue they collect doesn't go in cash or into any private. It, it, it goes directly into the government post. So these are things that the federal government should also introduce to digitalize the civil service. Otherwise, these civil servants that we are seeing who are daring ministers, they will frustrate the government. <laughs> and they can frustrate the ministers as well. The only way to, to, to deal with it is to make sure that there are things they cannot do manually. And those things are the ones that yield money and ensure that, look at somebody asking the president, if you are addressing a minister in the way I saw them addressing the woman, you are addressing the president. You are insulting the president if you are insulting the minister. That cannot be allowed to go on. If the president wants to achieve his goals, this is the way to go. And we will support him to see that there is general improvement in, in the output in our civil service. Okay, when there then. is accountability on Kuyori, All right, then. you will see that People will take their jobs seriously. And you should not just uh, uh, do it or say, I mean, just say it. When an assessment is done and if a minister or an appointee is found not to be performing, he should ask that person to go. Then others will know that it's a serious business, not just to talk. Indeed. The situation. Indeed. You know, it, it has been said. There was another minister who sat on that uh, President Buari. He was saying on television that for the four years he spent there, the president is not asking anything unless he wants to see the president because before it, how do you supervise a ministry or a minister like that? You can't get results like that. All right, then. I'm very happy the way this president that I've been supporting is taking things. 
and I are giving kudos. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much uh, for calling in. Uh, keep those calls coming. We'll even take Zoom calls if, uh, if we can. Uh, in fact, um, those, those are the, that's the number there. Uh, keep those numbers coming in. But in the meantime, we have on, on Zoom uh, Ken Okolubo. Uh, Ken Okolubo is on, uh, on the line via Zoom. Let's talk to Ken Okolubo. Uh, good morning, Ken. It's great to have you. Ken, politician, among always a, other things. Be on your program. Thank you very much for joining uh, the conversation. Um, gi give me your comments on this. Um, uh, it's uh, some, I've, I've just, one caller, you might have heard part of it, if not all of it. He's, he's excited uh, that we have this um, result delivery uh, unit. And by implication, uh, a monitoring unit as well. Your thoughts? Oh, okay. One is to have the monitoring unit. One is to have the results. Uh, President Tinubu has started on a good, on a good note because uh, his renewed hope agenda is something Nigerians have looked forward to, beginning to yield his desired results. Five months into his government, we have had a very serious strain on the economy. We can't deny the fact that. The Naira is at a halt, at a, it's at an all time high at almost a thousand three hundred to a dollar. Up until now, that it has gotten to below a thousand two hundred. We can't deny the fact that the removal of subsidy has made things very difficult in terms of inflation yeah, rates rising at to as high as it said. I still need the phones. Well, like what President Tinubu has said himself, he has acknowledged the, the pain. He says we should take it like we're in labor. Just like a woman in labor who goes through so much pain before the, the child is born. If you look at what happened with the previous regime, we had ministers who were not being checkmated. Uh, Fashola captured it all when he clearly said that the difference between Tinubu and Buhari is like a Moreno and any other coach. Tinubu will want to jump into the field while he's coaching. But Buhari will put the players away till 19 minutes. So the retreat that we are having for the ministers has been long awaited. Apart from the fact that it's been long awaited, it's going to now put the ministers on their toes because what, Buhari, what Tinubu has told them is the ball clearly stops at my table. But you are the ones to do the deliverables. Now, if we check the indices for your deliverables and those indices do not meet with our expectation, we'll give you a warning signal. That is what he meant by review. It will give you a yellow card. And if the trend continues, we'll show you the way out. I think that way, each of the ministers will understand that it is not going to be business as usual. And the fact that the Supreme Court has given his judgment, it also gives Tinubu no reason to say he's being distracted. And he accepts that fact and he acknowledges that fact. And that is why you can see that every Monday now we are having the Federal Executive Council meetings. What matters most now is to get this economy from this present state that he inherited it. Just like he said at the retreat that he inherited the liabilities and the positives of the previous government. One would say that the liabilities of the previous government was a huge, was a huge one. And uh, Tinubu has uh, tried Let's take that. Go Good morning, Gabriel. Hello? Good morning, Gabriel. Good morning. Yes. Obiori. Please go ahead. Yeah, please. Uh, I'm interested in this topic. And uh, let me allude with uh, Mr. George. Mr. Mr. George has said a lot of things. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yeah. So Mr. George has said a lot of things about his government, and I really allude with Mr. George. You see, with this, with this time, there's no talk at all, because we, Nigeria already, we are almost gone with our economy. So we need... We need... We need action to get over all this uh, mess we are into now. Because we cannot start, we cannot start, uh, we cannot just wait it. We cannot be waiting for uh, ministers to, to draw us back. As the, as the, as the president has already said, anybody that is not doing well, please show him the way out. Because we, we, are, we are in a serious economic problem, and which this president has said, please don't pity me. So that is, it meant, it, it, the president meant well for Nigeria. So oh, please, let's rally him and support him. Because if you cannot do that, I'm sorry, because 
uh, everybody's waiting to see results. Not, not, uh, not issue of uh, uh, this minister is doing that like the previous administration that left. Minister will not do anything. The president is just looking at. But for, for, for this, for, for this action now, please, we want everyone to support the president to see that he succeeded in his uh, uh, in, 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 in this tenure, so that by very soon every every Nigerian will start enjoying the evidence of democracy. So that's my own contribution. Uh, and and thank you uh, very much for it, uh, uh, Gabriel. Um, we we still have. Uh, uh, Ken uh, Okolubo on the line uh, as before that call came in. Uh, as we, as as you know, as is the concept. That's what that um, caller was speaking about. Because there are no, there's no time for distractions anymore. And I think um, this president's uh, initiative of putting this format on the ground. It's not as if I mean, it didn't. It didn't say that. Look, you're gone. But it did say that. Look. You're going to have to sign this bond, and that was quite uh, uh, telling. You're going to have to sign this bond uh, so that if you're performing, all's good. Uh, let's say you miss the objective, then what we can do is we can review it. And it is only when it is clear that there is no performance that you'll be leaving us. So that modus of putting out there how he intends to relate with his uh, cabinet, and uh, uh, not just cabinet, but also permanent secretaries and heads of government agencies. I guess what many people are noting is that this actually now puts everybody uh, that is working as a public official there on their toes. And that is uh, what hasn't been held in the past. Uh, yes, in the past we have not established that on this program. But what there needs to be is that uh, we can't have only one person, Hadiza Bala, monitoring for okay, six minutes. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. You also agree with that, Uncle Yori. So we must have other people, other technocrats, who would also have, because you cannot have the indices for every ministry. I, for example, I, if... I, I was imagining, uh, you are, sorry for interrupting you, but I was imagining that almost, that sort of goes without saying, um, uh, she would have to have a staff, you know, she would have to have a, a staff, just as in, Although you can't relate the same, but sometimes when you see, you, you know how it is, you, when you see a presenter on television in all those big shows, the, the, you just see the presenter. There's a whole staff. There's a whole staff yeah. behind him where yeah. he's just the person that is the front man. Okay. If you take the blue economy, for example, the minister of the blue, the, the blue, the blue the, that is a new ministry. Uh, Hadiza will have a lot of experience there because she was the chairman of the Nigerian Parks Authority. But if you come to somewhere like science and technology, she might not have the needed uh, uh, experience. So okay. what and, I'm thinking... And that's where her staff will come yeah, in. Who will have to be appointed with her, maybe on the junior cadre, like maybe senior special assistants, who would have to help in that regards with experience in those uh, performance indices that she's going to work with. Except you're going to tell me she's going to work with consultants. If she's going to work with consultants, then that's fair enough. But having said that, if you look at the Ministry of FCT, Mike has gone ahead of everybody. He has gotten he has gotten the Civil Service Commission for the first time in the history of the FCT to become established. He has gotten a mandate secretary for the Ministry of Women Affairs, and so these are the kind of things that Nigerians want to see in each of the ministries. I'm using just uh, the FCT as an example. In the time past, they didn't have all this. He has pulled out the FCT from the TSA because the FCT, whether we actually like it or not, is actually a state of, of his own. And so the, what, has, what has he achieved with all these three things he has done? He has been able to set the uh, uh, ground rolling. And he has been able to get 30 kilometers of road approved by the minister. These are the kind, oh, sorry, by the president. Mm -hmm. These are the kind of desirable effects that we want to be hearing from other ministries. Using mm -hmm. Wiki's ministry as uh, 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 a, an example, to other ministries. And if we have ministers who do not even wait for them to set an agenda, but looking at the president's renewed agenda and keen into renewed it. Renewed hope. And taking into what Nigerians are facing now in terms of the economy, mm -hmm. then those, those deliverables would be much easier to achieve Indeed. without waiting for the state. I guess that's why you need self-starters. Um, Akin has called in from Lagos. Good morning, Akin. Good morning, Akin. 
Good morning, Aki. In Lagos. Okay. I, I think the network is playing up. Uh, Akin also reached us by phone. Akin called in from Lagos. Um, keep those calls coming. Uh, but, you know, uh, sorry, Ka Ken. You, you made this point, and I, uh, yeah, uh, th this point about it's, it's a big job. It's an onerous job um, to actually do what needs to be done. Uh, that is, oversee the result delivery unit. Uh, but as you alluded, uh, there is experience in the lady who is in charge, uh, but not experience in everything. She herself would be the first to say that. And that's why I was suggesting that maybe the president couldn't go into the finer details uh, of the matter. Clearly, it seems to me that a person um, like um, the head of that unit would actually you know, have to have a competent staff, technocrats that you've spoken about it. The, the big thing here, uh, perhaps, is that it's an innovation. And you also alluded to the fact that you were using the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory as an example. Uh, these people have to be self-starters. They have to be self-starters. These are not the people that need to, um, that, 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 that should be waiting for, for briefs in that way, unless there is a particular brief that the president wants to inject. Uh, you spoke about, uh, I think it was, was it you or was it a caller, who spoke about a minister in the last dispensation who had said that, um, for four years, nobody got in touch with him. It was only if he had a need that he went uh, over there. Well, the fact that nobody got in touch with you, uh, you can just imagine that kind of scenario. But those kind of things will not likely be possible now. People won't be able to just sit down there. Uh, because as you are probably, as you are surely aware, in fact, uh, you, we've been on this program together, Ken, when you yourself have complained about certain departments and agencies wondering what exactly yeah. are those people doing. Now it looks like there will be much less of those complaints because there's someone uh, who is watching out and looking out for all of that periodically. Okay, if you look at the National Orientation Agency, for example, which for is just example, a, a department under the Ministry of Information, it has been more reborn until now that you have had a new appointment made by the uh, president. Now, the president has appointed the DG now for the NOA. The NOA is supposed to have offices in 774 local governments of this country. It's supposed to be the information arm of a government, not even the Minister of Information. It's supposed to be the one that should carry out the enlightenment on the, on the policies of Tinubu's government, for example, and things that he is doing, especially like the palliatives, like other social investment programs. But you see, the NOA under, uh, sorry to say, under Buhari was dead on arrival. So these are... Uh, in, uh, uh, departments that you must look at and say, how many of these departments are we going to make uh, responsible? Because if the NOA, NOA is not working, for example, the Minister of Information is also shortchanged. It's not enough for you to think of Radio Nigeria and NTA to be the only arm of uh, information dissemination from the Minister of Information, because most people will not probably turn to NTA. They will rather watch TVC, Arise, or channels. So, uh, a minister will want to send his, his program across to several and several local governments, he will rather rely on the uh, NOA. So I just use that as, as another example yes. of indices you are going to use where you are carrying out a retreat. Mm -hmm. So the minister looking at will say, look, I need all these people to function for me to be able to succeed as his minister of information, to be able to send the message across to Nigerians that these are the things President Tinubu is doing, and these are, these are the reasons why he must give Tinubu, you know, for example, the loans that he has applied to collect. There's not been enough information on it. Nigerians okay. are already kicking it. Mm. So these things will be uh, dealt with, no doubt. Ada in Joss, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, you're, you're coming for too long. Uh, and your guest, uh, Ken. I was calling from Joss, my two states. I'm so excited with uh, your... Uh, it's in a strategy. I know that you will come up with this. If you didn't come up with this, I would have been disappointed. I'm happy with what you said to them in the retreat. That if you don't want it, if you don't, you know, you cannot perform, you leave. If they don't leave, you will fire them. And so they now know that it's not business as usual. And let him not, let him not uh, only depend on uh, his um, official um, advisors or whatever to get information. I, I can trust him, you know, he, he has energy. Let him also be monitoring them through the television, through the media, through all of this. You know, at least when you monitor like that, that will help you to know what your advisors are telling you, whether it's the truth. 
that's how to do it. And then let him come up with a time frame. Let them be involved in media chat. Maybe six months, let them come and tell us what they have done or what they are doing or whatever, you know. Just like uh, Mr. Ken said there, you don't need anybody, even a blind person, even a blind person, that person knows that Wiki is working. In fact, the life of Wiki, the way he's working, he's a mix of faith with London. You know, even with the, 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 that, that, uh, the, 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 the same thing. They are mix of faith with London if they have any. You know, so that is it. So let them be hard, let them work. Let it not be like before. When some people just stay there, I think it is an inheritance, they are not performing, they'll stay there eight good years, what that was supposed to mean. Uh, and I'm happy that he has accepted that he has, uh, he has uh, inherited the assets and liabilities. God will help him. I have always known that Silibu can do it. He, uh, he, has that, he has that political will. He can do it. And you see what happens. Some people will get disappointed. People will think he'll come there and become a puppet on a screen. He was waiting for the verdict to come. The verdict has come. That All right, then. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, God, man. Thank you very much, Ada. <laughs> Ken, uh, I think it was you who, who, who said, or was it Ada, that, look, now is when meaning has been given to the, uh, to the phrase, not business as usual. Uh, you know, we've been hearing that. In fact, in the last administration, it was said, uh, but um, the application, you know, it's still, you know, out there. It's questionable uh, whether indeed anything was done in that regard. But clearly now, this is a clear departure, as Ada was saying, it's not business as usual anymore. There are no rocks to hide under anymore because there are people now you've given the job to, to please let us know how well we are doing in a certain area or, or the other. And I think... Um, it remains to be executed, as you pointed out, Ken, that it's going to take a heck of a doing. But the point is, there's an effort towards the concept of it's not business as usual anymore. I mean, the very notion that between the ministers, the permanent secretaries, and the heads of government agencies, you can actually be asked to take your leave if, you know, you have failed at a review. Because, as he said, if you're doing okay, no problem. If it's not so okay, we shall review. But if you fail that one, well, you're going to have to kindly take your leave. Um, this has not been said clearly. I don't think anybody can remember if such an attitude uh, was actually used. But just before you respond, Ken, uh, good morning, Mr. Yakub. Hello. Mr. Yakub, good morning to you. Yeah, good morning, Shijori, and then uh, good morning to your guest, Mr. Okolego. Uh, Ali, you can see the, the reason why I give uh, Mr. George the title of uh, president of uh, this morning <laughs> fans because I know that he always hit it at the right place. Uh, Mr. George, I've said it all, but let me just add a little thing. Sure. Mr. Ayori, I, I'm very happy, and then I see great honor as well that. Uh, uh, giving my phone to President uh, Ashwat Bola Ahmed Inubu, it has uh, looking like I did not lose my vote. And then I'm proud that I give that vote to him. And then I'm proud to like campaign for him in my area, for him to get a lot of votes here in Dokumemo as well. See, Tijori, this is the kind of system that we have been looking for. That a president that will put all his Arsenal, and that puts all his uh, uh, co-workers, I call those ministers as a co-workers, put them on, on, a, on a spot. Because it is not like uh, uh, the former the president that, uh, as uh, former minister, in president of Iraq, Fashola said, one of occasion here, even in this studio, uh, in uh, uh, one of the uh, coal, uh, coal uh, uh, program, which is your few, says that, uh, the, the, the technique of uh, former president is that you give you a job and then we will allow you to do whatever you like. I try to boil a mess to do, but it's not like that. I'm very happy. Then, Mr. Yori, I want to make a request. My request is this. I would like your, uh, the, uh, the TCC as an organization, as, as you are always doing, especially to information minister, then information like Mohamed. I want you guys to extend it to all the ministers this time around. Brought them here. Let them be, let them be scrutinized here by we that will come to this studio. Because we that is masses, we know if they come here, lie to us. I know, Mr. Yori, you give us chance. So let them know that you are lying. 
You cannot come here and tell us that you are doing this. Which one are not doing it? This is only station. That I keep saying this. This is only station that giving us opportunity to let them know that we are watching them. Okay. To let them know that we are know what they are doing. If they, they are coming here and telling us otherwise, they know Okwelegwe on the other side will tell them that no, you are lying to Nigerian citizens. In fact, Oh. Because of we that we are calling to the studio, Mr. President, we know that his his asana is is his co-worker aligned to Nigerian citizens. Okay. So that Mr. Yori, my request is this: try okay, to be bring them one by one. After six months, let them be synchronized by us. God bless you. Thank you very much for calling in, Mr. Yakub. Ken, you see there, even our you know our viewers are saying that even we we want to get in on the act, bring all of those ministers pending yeah. when oh. they are getting their you know uh, those things, but. We're discussing the setting up uh, at the uh, presidential uh, retreat uh, that started off, kicked off yesterday. Um, the new kind of arrangement, there's now a result uh, delivery unit. And in the president's uh, words, uh, I've taken a young lady, very dynamic, Hadiza Bala Usman, to head that delivery unit. And you have, if you have any complaints about her, uh, see me. The president also said there that um, he was going to be granting, uh, you know, a, a substantial amount of um, autonomy to all these functionaries. If you don't understand anything, ask questions. Uh, but that says, that says to me that the president also expects that within the brief of the Renewed Hope Agenda, the president expects, you know, his functionaries, his officials to be self-starters. Um, and uh, Ken, you, you had referred to that earlier, using the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory as an example of people who, on their own initiative, on their own steam, you know, have gotten some difference from the way things were once the president was persuaded that, um, you know what, that's not a bad idea at all. That's the important thing about having a square peg in a square hole. Uh, when I was a commissioner, I remember we didn't have the governor written down our necks, but we had the a, a check, a check from uh, another commissioner who was sitting in the executive executive council of the of the state, uh, monitoring us in the sofa deck, and that put that put all of us on our toes. And we had we had set deliverables, and it ha it helped us to achieve so much as we achieved us at that time. I remember I did as much as ninety projects. You understand, and maybe if we didn't have all those check checks in place, some of us would not have performed as we performed as at that time. When you put, when you are in the executive, you have a budget. You can't work outside your budget. You know, budget is an appropriation, it's a mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. But if you are also working, where in your budget presentation, that's also a set of deliverables. You must be able to en en encapsulate the programs, tailor to us what you have presented in the Federal Executive Council to be able to be funded in the budget. And when you have uh, challenges, that is when you can run to the Secretary to Government or then to the president to say, look, I have challenges in funding. That is why I'm not performing. Because you don't expect a minister who does not have a funded budget, for example, to perform. Because contractors will not bid for a job that is not funded. And even when they bid for a job that is not funded, some of them will leave the site if they are not getting funds. And you know, this, pro this process of having to go six months or three months in applying for certain uh, uh, parameters of payment for purchases and supplies are some of the issues that have to be taken care of in the retreat. If you notice, a lot of the ministers the time pass have complained that this has enabled them not to perform because they are waiting for clearance. Even Uma here, as, as it was, talked about it. There should be either ways that we can use in checkmating this process of, of, of going through this very bureaucratic process of maybe going to the uh, Bureau of Public uh, 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 Purchase or having to say because of checks and balances. We like checks and balances. But the ministers, for them to be able to say, look, I have this approved expressly so that I can immediately hit the ground running. These are certain parameters you must also look at. Because if those hurdles are there and you now find the minister wanting, you, you, you cannot blame the minister. For example, a road job that, has, that you need 200 million to complete and the budget has 50 million in your reach, yeah. How, how minister completes that road job? Yeah, I, 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 I get what you're saying. Let me, let me bring in Aki, who has called in from Ogun State. Good morning, Aki. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. 
Now, Gloria, I think I have said most of the I want to say a while ago, but my what I want to add to it is if we can get this uh, woman at this uh, Bala Usman's uh, number published so that everybody who has any complaining <laughs> administrators <laughs> of praise can easily <laughs> a complain to her. We appreciate what our president is doing and we wish him well. Very well. Very well. Thank you very much for calling in, Akin. You see now, Ken, I was telling you, Nigerians are immediately owning this whole concept. But, aha! Very, very good. Please, can you give us that madam's number? We want to join. I've got to call on the now because it's going to be made. She's a, she's a perfect, so to speak. I know. And it's, it's also important. Why it's important is that I like the fact that she was chief of staff to the uh, president, to the former governor of Kaduna before she became the chairman of NPA. And now she's in this position. So she comes with a lot of experience. You can't take that away from those positions she has held. Yes. But like I, I reiterated here, let us not lose sight of the fact that either she needs consultants or she needs a lot of assistance in that in that office. Because mm -hmm. when I looked at the list of people that could attend FEC meetings, apart from her and probably the special advisor on uh, on information and um, and uh, strategy, uh, there was Lion no other... Or by on Anuga. So there was no other person so to say. So that therefore means that she will be the one sitting down with all the ministers. She goes back to her office. I know she will have consultants quite all right. But we need other people that can assist her in driving this process because her, her own department has become very important because with that check and balance is now coming from her own department, it's going to make the ministers work. But at the same time, it's going to also overwhelm her office. It's uh, very important it, to it, also it, know. If they are not very strategic about it, and as you said, there's plenty of experience there. The president even said it himself that, look, we have we have the we, we have we, we have the manpower here. We have the qualitative manpower. Um, that you know, the, the president said that inter alia. And here are Nigerians excited at the whole idea. Um, good morning, uh, Reverend Dominic. Good morning, Yori. Good morning, my brother, and my friend Ken. Good morning, Dominic. Yori. Here for yeah, Yuri, there's something George said we, we must uh, take a second look at, and we are closing it. George said for this policy to work, for Mr. President to achieve results, all sectors, all parasitas, civil servants must comply. But Yuri, I'm going to give you a, 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 a life testimony that makes me feel that there's a few hoops about that this system. I don't know whether power is still under the power ministry. I have an old, old meter I've been using since 10 years ago. Yori, I recharged it on Monday so I can have light. When I come to recharge it, it couldn't pick up the, the charges. It couldn't discharge. So I have to go to their office. They told me they have canceled my meter. I have to pay 150000 for another one. I said, okay, can I pay and have another meter? They said, no, even that pay now, I have to stay in prison for three months before I get another meter. How do you cancel the old meter? And you didn't let me know. You have my email, you have my phone number, and we're talking about power here. You cancel my old meter, you don't have another new meter, and I have to be three months. And this meter, we are millions in Nigeria that use it. You just face it off without telling us. Now, where is my money, which I paid on Monday? They said that money is gone. Where is my money gone? For this system to work, your way, every house must be on deck. There's no way Mr. President will choose results. If the civil servants, if the agencies are not cooperating, no, it's not possible. There's no nation that works without the, me, you, and everybody. And this is what, why I voted for uh, President, God, President. What he did in Lagos here, he put everybody on check. And some cooperate, some do not cooperate. In this dispensation, every body must cooperate for Nigeria to work well. We are in desperate. Please, power holding Nigeria Limited. If they are still part, part of Nigeria, the minister should look out into that system again. How do you cancel meters? You have short of meters, and you don't have meters to replace them. You cancel millions from the one that was already working before. How does it work? And who, how would I say it is Mr. President that makes not to have power, but the power company or the power ministry? So every house must be on deck for we to move forward. This is what we must, you know, put to everybody. Every house must be on deck. And if there's anybody that we will fight it. Good morning, Nigerians. Uh, well, well, thank you. Um, I had a difficulty in, under, in hearing what you were saying, but by and large, I think I got it. Thank you for calling in. That's not your problem. It was in studio here that the level was too low. Um, so, 
Um, well, uh, Ken, um, as, you, as you will recall, um, these are matters that would squarely fall under someone's purview in the range of uh, officials that, you know, are servicing the country. And, um, you know, the president had said inter alia that, um, look, he gave the impression that at that place where he said that perfection belongs only to God. So I got the impression that it will, this whole project will be tweaked as we go along. What Reverend Dominic brought up there was something about this suddenly it's becoming so cumbersome to just switch meters, for instance. Okay, of course, that one goes straight away to somebody's uh, department. Why is it like that? Why, what, 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 what can be done that is not being done? Why are Nigerians, for example, look at the whole rocket science they're trying to make out of this whole matter about we need to switch up how we use our meters in compliance with a new world order. Uh, but people go on the website and cannot actually access uh, the worksite yet. Yet we were being told that by the 1st of November, if you didn't uh, have the new system in place, you would not be able to recharge your meter and that kind of thing. Maybe people have to ask, why are the systems like this? Why are they asking us to do all of this? Why can't it all be done automatically? Maybe technology. This is when we come to know, uh, Ken, that whether or not we are really tech savvy, uh, whether or not uh, government is uh, you know, falling down, uh, you know, as it were, uh, whether or not there are things that can be done. Because me, I don't see how they can do a lot of things that they say we should be doing if you say all of Nigerians uh, should now go and, you know, process a change in the way the meters are used, yet it's not intuitive. Uh, you know, we had this problem when the NIM, NIM thing came up. They were threatening us that if you don't have it, this will happen. And we had, had to keep on extending because it wasn't the fault of the people. So these are the areas where I imagine that tweaks will be made as we go along, but there's no gain saying the fact that it is a mammoth operation. Yeah, yes, the thing is uh, monitoring and, and supervision, which, is, which boils down to the fact that you have decentralized the discos, you decentralized power. Yes. You are in charge of the TCN. The TCN has to monitor the Jenkos. The Jenkos have to now transmit power to the discos. The discos will now transmit power to us. So if there is no monitoring, if there is no evaluation of what has been implemented, and take corrections from the lapses. You always see these things happen because you see most of, more often than not, when we talk of privatization, a lot of powers have been given to the discos. So the Ministry of Power is not doing its bids through the TCN. And so now that we have these new uh, people coming on, on board, and now it also boils down to the same monitoring and evaluation we are talking about, we should be able to get better results from the discos. Those same, that disconnect that has been between the discos, the Jenkos, and TCN should be able to be breached. And if you breach that disconnect, the discos will now say, okay, they're properly monitored. The discos uh, will, that, will now have no choice but to monitor their officials who are now put in charge of these uh, meters and other parameters that are used in generating electricity to the houses. It goes to, it's, it's no gain saying that people sit down in, their, in the comfort of their office these days like you're rightly saying, if we are technologically suave and they are able to monitor, they're able to fashion out uh, programs that would enable them to get feedbacks from the end users. But we have not been able to get to that stage. And so while we are still trying to get to that stage, we need to implement these things by way of using it at, at a pyramidal peak, coming from top to bottom. And in that way, you'll be able to effectively monitor what is happening. Well, you know, the president also said that the buck stops here, meaning on his desk. Um, uh, he, it, it indicated that he wasn't going to be passing the buck around. He said he inherited both the assets and liabilities uh, from his predecessor, uh, but we are all now in one ship. And um, uh, tellingly, he said, do not wreck the ship. In other words, everybody has to pull their weight, and it's not a time for excuses. People don't want to hear excuses. All we're interested in is um, uh, progress and development. So it looks like um, there, there's very little room for explanation or excuses. 
they're just going to be asking for performance. I hear that we have Titi Loye. Did I get that right? Titi Loye. Titi Loye is on the line. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Titi Loye. Yes, I, I want to contribute to what is being uh, done at this uh, Dion Kuyori. Sure, sir. Go ahead, please. Okay. My contribution is this. Uh, I want to thank uh, 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 Reverend Dominic for his contribution. That's very wonderful. I also want to lay my emphasis on that. As much as we have our President Tinubu that we know we so much, some of us believe in him so much, and uh, we can see what some of the ministers are already doing. Uh, but if we are to uh, move faster and achieve results, government must find a, a way of dealing with civil servants, dealing with those who are working with agencies and ministries. They are the major problem. For example, I'm a consultant. We got a taxpayer that was not on the taxnet before. We wanted him to be provided on, on tax promise. As we speak, we have been on it for more than a month. And we are calling them. They had a little issue on tax promise. Is it the taxpayer's fault or consultant's fault to rectify that issue? Somebody who wants to be paying tax to government, that the staff working at Everest are frustrating the taxpayer from being profiled. What could be the problem? It's not normal for them to contact their head of it if they're having a problem. We've called, we've chatted, we've done everything. As we speak, they are no longer uh, uh, even attending to call, responding to that, thinking that they are doing taxpayer any favor for doing what they are employed to do. Um, most problem is most of them are just there chatting, getting the money paid. Meanwhile, they are not even delivering results. They can frustrate whatsoever effort that minister and government are putting in place. I think they need to be checked and mail effectively. X, the rate of recovery will be very slow compared to what uh, President Tinubu and minister are put effort they are putting in place to make things work. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you very much uh, for calling in uh, on that, Mr. Titiloe. Exactly. Uh, now there's little, there's very, very little shade, little, very, very little area to uh, hide under when things are not working the way they should work. Uh, already, you know, both of us were here, Ken, when people were calling and saying, aha, now I'm happy. I also want to be in it. Somebody challenged us, bring in those ministers the way you used to bring them in before. Uh, you know, some of them. Bring more of them in. Let them come and tell us. Let, us, let them hear, hear from us. So some of those things that are routine, one, uh, the people would think, ordinary people would think, that are routine that um, perhaps governance would have been able to sort of uh, address and put in place. Uh, when they're not in place, now they're going to count against perhaps the um, smoothness of the operation, this whole renewed hope operation. And um, so ministers are not going to be very tolerant of those kind of situations. They themselves will want to know what is the bottleneck, why is the bottleneck happening. And I imagine with those kind of things, uh, they, they spoke about this whole power thing that you've explained, Ken. Other areas uh, that uh, the president uh, also spoke about, the security from terror, all forms of criminality, fairness and uh, rule of law, uh, anti-corruption, um, you know, uh, and all those kind of things. All of these are fair game that we have to be monitoring how well we are doing or not doing because the provision has been left there for, what, uh, for um, uh, not doing. But you said it very well at the, at the beginning, Ken, that, um, well, the, the, the exercise is excellent, but let's see it work in practice. And that um, uh, let's see it work in practice. Uh, I think uh, the taste of the uh, pudding, how is it that you and both people used to say is in the eating? Is it's actually in the eating. Because if you look at the security situation we have in this country, it should also set an agenda for the, uh, the, for the security architecture of the country, especially now that it has a new chief of staff or chief of defense staff, and you have a national security advisor. We have IPOP in the Southeast threatening the very existence of, although, of course, they're asking for self-determination, but you have the other arm, which has 
been led by Simon Ekpa, which has been uh, threatening the very existence of the people as you guys sit at home, which has crippled the economy of the Southeast. We have Boko Haram still raging in the Northeast. And we have the uh, bandits kidnapping and the farmer and headers clashes. Yes, it's not as it was before now, but uh, the security architecture in this country still needs a lot of rejigging. So I think parameters should also be set by Mr. President for the security uh, agencies, for them to also know that they're going to be evaluated. That's way they will be put on their toes. Remember that we, we complained so much. I remember on this studio, I complained so much when the chief of army staffs and a whole lot of them were left for about six years by Buhari without making any change. And we're complaining that, look, we needed to rejig, we needed to rejig, until eventually we long time being rejig. So now, if we also set those parameters in the security arm, which is very key, without security, there can be no progress. It will also allow them to know that, look, my job is on the line, and I have to make sure that there is no crime. I have to make sure that there is no kidnapping. I have to make sure that there is no killing. And I, make, I have to make sure that there is no ethnic uh, upheavals. So that also helps a lot in the security sector, just like what he has done in the tax sector. The tax reform committee has done excellently well. Most of the double taxation and most of us have complained in the time past have really told on the economy. We have been able to identify. But let us put the paper to, to work so that it will not be one that has just been submitted to the president, as we have seen in the time past. So these are some of the areas that need to be uh, dealt with in this, in this retreat. Indeed. Well, um, by all indications, it's, it does seem as if um, this particular uh, initiative, uh, you know, one among uh, quite a few that have uh, been brought um, uh, about uh, since um, President Tinumbu took the oath of office. This particular initiative has been a hit, and um, everybody hopes that it will work. And um, the president is very, very confident that it will work um, the way it has been set up. But he also left room that, look, only God is perfect, meaning my interpretation is that whatever needs to be tweaked will be tweaked. You know, I just need to, uh, the people know me. If, there's a, they, if they think they've suspected a gap or a, a lapse or anything like that, let me know about it, and then we can review it. We can, we can fix these things. Among those things are some of the things that you have spoken about, Ken. Uh, so um, we're going to have to leave it here for now. But I want to thank you, um, Mr. Ken Okulubo, for coming on the program this morning. Really appreciate your time. And also thanks to all those who called in out there. And indeed, uh, your comments have been noted. Some of those who said that we want to see those ministers. Let them also come and talk with us. We've been talking with some of them. Let it not stop. Let us continue to see them. Indeed, that uh, shall be the case, all other things being equal. So that's our program today. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I'm Yori Folare. Bye-bye for now.